Title Extreme Wrestling, my name is Brendan Plays. This is All Elite Wrestling Fighter Fest. It is our pay per view day today. Let's jump straight into it. And I actually, in the corner of my eye here, caught what was our pay per view from last year with Fighter Fest. So let's have a quick little look at what went down on Fighter Fest 2020. Um, it's an interesting one. Uh, looking back in this card, it's um, very. <laughs> Very different compared to what we've been doing now. It was a 74 rated show. Main event was actually Cody Rhodes versus Jake Hager for the TNT Championship. 72 rated. Jericho and Orange Cassidy had a match. 79. Brian Cage, he squashed Michael Nakazawa. I'm surprised we had something like that on the show. Ray Phoenix beat Ricky Starks. Statlander beat Bea Priestley. FTR beat The Butcher and the Blade. Lance Archer defeated Pineapple Pete. Yes. Yep, we had Pineapple Pete on pay-per-view. Um, Sheeta defeated Nyla Rose for the women's title. That was a 57-rated match. That's pretty good. Brody Lee was on the card. 63 with Cole Cabana. That's a pretty solid match. MJF and Christopher Daniels, 69. Yeah, I remember that feud. De MJF and Daniels had a pretty long feud. And then we had Adam Page, Kenny Omega defeated Best Friends for 77 for the World Tag Titles. So yeah, like a lot of middle the card matches, a lot of probably average matches, but you know, it goes to show the growth that we've made. I feel like we're going to blow that card out of the water today, and that's the plan. We are going to be holding it in the southeast as well, so that's our strongest region. I think going forward, definitely pay-per-views, we're going to stay in the southeast. If we really want to have the best possible shows, then southeast has got to be our area. It's our best uh, popularity zone. Obviously, we've been in the southeast for the whole entire series so we might as well say that 16,000 fans expected that would be huge if we can get that and we're gonna hold the event in Miami so let's hope we can do that the card is all booked and we might as well jump straight on into it lots to get through lots of pre-show stuff so let's jump into it all right we're gonna kick it off with Riho taking on Jay Cargill for a 42 rated match Jay Cargill picked up the win in about a 12 minute match Jay 36 Riho 41 so the push continues for Jade Cargill. We're trying to really get her over as the next dominant heel in the women's division. Riho, former champion. The storyline was Jade Cargill wants to defeat all the former champions before she eventually goes after the championship herself. Uh, she's dealt with Nyla Rose. She's dealt with Rio. Next will probably be uh, Hikaru Shida. And then we might have her come after the women's championship. 42. Jay Cargill cut a promo afterwards. She called out the rest of the locker of the women's locker room and challenged them all to try and take her down. So she's feeling pretty confident in how good she's been going, the form that she's in, the, the streak that she's been on. Um, so she's challenging everyone else to try and take it, uh, take her down. 46 for that one. All right, we had a, a thrown together match. We had best friends with Wheeler Yuta, who in real life looks like he might be a part of Ben's best friends. He's like a you know one of their new members potentially. So we tried him out here in this role. They took on the Butcher and the Blade and the Acclaim. Bit of a way just to get a few guys in the card. 50 rated match in the end. Um, Trent got 51. Orange Cassidy was the best of the match with 60. Um, and the heel side of things didn't do that well. But 50 rated, not too bad. A good way to get best friends on the card in a win. Serena Deeb took on Lever Bates for 37. Uh, Serena Deeb 39, Lever Bates 29. Um, the, the hint to Serena Deeb turning heel got a poor reaction because it's still too soon since her last turn. So we are looking to turn Serena heel, but obviously, yeah, we've got that potential warning um, there that it may not go down too well because it's been too soon since, I guess, she debuted and would debut as a Bayface. Um, but I think we need to switch her up because at the moment she's kind of lost in the shuffle. A heel turn would be a good opportunity for her just to try something different and potentially... Uh, advanced to the next step of her career in AEW. Um, so we're not going to turn her heel just yet. So we'll leave it at that. Um, and she cut a promo post-match as well. 39 um, was the promo. And she asked AEW management as to why she hasn't been given more opportunities. She feels as though she's been picking up wins. She's doing well. But she's not getting the chances to really prove herself on the big stage. So... Uh, Alex Marvez did a good job in this segment, so there you go. Alex actually doing something good for once. 39 for that promo, not not too bad. Um, 
All right, next up, we had Lee Johnson. He was wel welcomed into the Nightmare family. So Dustin Rhodes and the guns are out there. And uh, he, they were uh, introducing Lee Johnson to the group. And Lee Johnson did not do well without a script to follow. So, yeah, testing the waters a little bit here, seeing, okay, who can react well with a script? Who needs, you know, who needs to you know, cut promos with that one? Who can get that extra bonus? You know, I thought Dustin Rhodes, for example, would do really well with that one, but he did not. So testing the waters a little bit here, Lee Johnson, bring him in into the Nightmare family, extending that group out a little bit more, uh, and giving Dustin Rhodes maybe something new to work with. Maybe he and Lee Johnson can be a tag team, or at least a mentorship position. Something to kind of give Dustin Rhodes maybe to do. And then we had the Pinnacle, hyping up MJF ahead of his title defense tonight. Um, so we, once again, we went without the script, um, well, sorry, we went with the script with everyone other than MJF, because MJF, you know, doesn't need one. But everyone else struggled because of it. 53 rated for the promo. We had everyone in this segment talking. So, a, a way to develop the mic skills of everyone in the pinnacle. Didn't have any story relations, so it didn't, have, you know, affect any storylines. So, that's not a big deal. But we just wanted to get everyone involved here, potentially, to, to maybe give them a bit of a boost to their skills. All right, we opened up the show. This is the main show now. Christian Cage versus powerhouse Will Hobbs. And Christian Cage, of course, defeating Will Hobbs in a 70-rated match. Pretty good. Christian Cage, 70. Will Hobbs, 48. Wow, that's really solid from Will Hobbs. Mark Henry did some good ring, uh, work ringside as well. Christian Cage picked up the win. The veteran showing that he's still the man and he's good enough to take down the young and up-and-coming stars. So, yeah, no chance we're going to have Will Hobbs take the win here, but it was a way to have him work with a veteran. Um... Hopefully, a, a big match like this, 70-rated match on pay-per-view, could really boost his popularity. Uh, fingers crossed. So that was the idea behind it. And Christian develop, uh, sorry, delivered very, very well here. And hopefully, yeah, it may develop Will Hobbs' his, his skills and his uh, popularity going forward. So I think we achieved what we wanted to here. We'll have to see how it goes post-match. But I think it's, um, it's a step in the right direction. Uh, post-match, Christian tries to bring a chair into the ring, but Mark Henry... Saves his client, he gets in there and runs Christian off. So we're not really setting up a match here. This is more so to show that Mark Henry has Will Hobbs' back. You know, the original purpose of bringing Mark Henry in as Will Hobbs' manager is Will Hobbs was getting jumped from behind. You know, he lacked some experience. He you know, didn't have anyone to watch his back. Mark Henry became that person. This is just Henry showing that, yeah, he's protecting his client here. 61. And also, you know, Christian trying to get a bit of heat. QT Marshall debuts his new faction called The Factory, and he says that he will get the respect that he deserves now. Nick Comorado and Aaron Solo made their debuts. Nick Comorado, poor was his gimmick rating, and Aaron Solo, adequate. We haven't had a lot of luck debuting gimmicks lately. Obviously, Anthony Agogo introduced into this group as well. So, yeah, a new group, obviously... We wanted to have this on the main show to not only debut these guys, but hopefully, you know, if it went well, maybe get a little bit out of the segment, maybe try and boost these guys' popularity a little bit. Uh, I doubt that that worked because it didn't go down that well. But, you know, you never know. At least now, we know, you've watched it on pay-per-view now, you know that it's a legitimate thing. You know, there may be a small little push for these guys. I don't think it's going to go far. I just think it's going to be another low-end heel group to kind of work with. But... You know, you never know. It may be something we, we, that catches a bit of fire. We have to wait and see. But yeah, so not a great start to Comorado and Solo's gimmicks, that's for sure. SCU took on Proud and Powerful, and Proud and Powerful picked up the win in about a 14-minute match in a 61-rated match. Ortiz 66, Santana 65, Daniels 54, Kazarian 52. So obviously, Christopher Daniels is retiring very, very soon, so the group of SCU is slowly about to crumble. Um, so we're going to have SCU putting over a lot of the tag teams, um, the better tag teams, trying to have some good matches before it's all said and done. And post-match, SCU, they contemplated their future after their loss here tonight. So they're kind of trying to figure out what's what's next for us. What are we going to be doing? You know, are we going to stay together? Are we going to keep going? Or is it time for us to kind of walk away? So that's how we maybe slowly... You're planting the seeds for a breakup between SCU. 
45 for the promo. We had Park. Here we go. The big debut of Malachi Black. Because Park is calling out for an opponent. The lights go out. Malachi Black appears. And Park runs away. So Park pretty much had an open challenge. He wanted to have an opponent here tonight at Fighter Fest. Malachi Black... Obviously, formerly known as Alistair Black, stepped up to the plate, accepted the challenge. Park wanted nothing to do with it. So, originally I was going to have Malachi Black debut and just take the championship straight away from Park. But now that I'm thinking about it, I feel like we might still do the match, Malachi Black versus Park. But probably have it as a non-title match. That way, you know, Park maybe can refuse to defend his championship. You know, he never wanted to defend it against Malachi Black and it's not the guy he wanted blah blah blah, figure out some sort of heel way for, for Park to get out of defending it. That way that Malachi Black, if he did defeat Park, which he probably would, that way Park doesn't lose the championship, because I don't really want the belt on Malachi Black. I think Malachi Black's going to be a main event guy for us, obviously he's on main event money, he needs to be in a main event slot, um, and that would free him up to maybe feud with an Adam Page, maybe you know Kenny Omega, something like that. Um, yeah, obviously, yeah, he's coming in as a babyface, so yeah, Kenny Omega would be potentially an opponent, MJF, um, Chris Jericho, lots of guys that he could work with going forward. So overall, really good segment, 69 for the segment, but Malachi Black's gimmick was rated as great. So that's what we were hoping to achieve. You know, a bad gimmick here would have really you know, dampened his run early on, but he's got, been given a good gimmick, and now we can really see this storyline develop. So Park versus Malachi Black, probably at the next pay-per-view, I'd say. All right, and we had an argument breaking out among the AEW women over who is the best team in AEW. So we're going to start the new storyline among the AEW women's tag team. Well, I'm not going to say it's a division because there's only three teams, but the three teams of AEW in the women's division are going to feud it out. So um, I think this is a good way just to introduce all the new teams that we've got going here, get them all fighting each other, get them interacting, plenty of singles matches, plenty of tag matches. And at worst, you know, it gets six women involved in a storyline. And, you know, it's a great way to hopefully develop all six and get them a bit of popularity happening. Um, out of the three, obviously, Brandy and Red Velvet would have the best chance of success because Brandy has 45 popularity. But NJ and, and Tay Conti, I, I like them probably more as a team. I think um, they have a lot of potential as future stars and long term, they could develop into being major players in the division. Whereas the Mel, and Mel and the Bunny, yeah, they're just a lower end tag team. Probably the team that will take the losses more often than not. So we'll start developing this, developing the storyline, and maybe try and add another team as well. I think a four team division, you know, that's just a division, I guess. Four teams is a division. I mean, hey, it's good enough for Monday Night Raw with their tag team division. So four teams would be good enough. I don't know what the fourth team would be. Maybe we'll have to sign a couple of new people. But um, yeah, that would be a good start. All right, Kip Sabian took on Ricky Starks in a 53-rated match. Pretty good. Uh, Ricky Starks, 49, and Kip Sabian, 45. So pretty good stuff here. Ricky Starks picked up the win. Um, for two guys who are in the lower mid-card, you know, Kip Sabian, mid-30s popularity. Ricky Starks is touching 40. I was a little bit hesitant to even put this on the main card, but it, de it de did deliver. 53 from these two guys, that's pretty solid. So Ricky Starks picks up the big win. A pay view win for him is huge. I'm hoping that this can be the start of something great for him and uh, really get his popularity moving because I think Ricky Starks has the potential to be a really big player in AEW. I'm not sure if a main event guy, but certainly on that upper mid card level, he could definitely be right there. So I would love to try and develop him there. And this is the, the first steps we're taking to really ramp that up for him. A win on pay-per-view is big. The Young Bucks say that they're not going to hold back tonight against the Hardys. So the Young Bucks, you know, recently on Dynamite, they had that interaction with the Good Brothers. So there's some potential hints that are they going to be turning heel? Are they going to say the baby face? Are they going to join the Good Brothers? What's happening there? So the Young Bucks basically saying in this one, Look, you know, we're going to see how it happens. We're going to do whatever it takes, no matter what. We want to stay champions. So 80 rated for their promo. And the match, wow, 80 rated as well. So an 80 promo followed up by an 80 rated match. The Young Bucks versus the Hardys. 18-minute match. Matt Jackson pinned Matt Hardy, and he used the ropes 
for leverage. The Young Bucks make it their fifth championship defense and they pick up the win. So there you go, huge match here. Two great tag teams fighting it out. The Hardys still proving that they can go. Jeff 76, Matt Hardy 70, the Young Bucks 85 apiece. Very good stuff. Young Bucks cheating their way here as well to a potential victory and it worked for them, 80 rated. Post-match as well, we have the Young Bucks super kicking the Hardys and reuniting with the Good Brothers. So the Good Brothers come out to celebrate with the Young Bucks. They try and beat down the Hardys and the Young Bucks, they jump in on that and help them take, down, take them down. So we will turn Matt Jackson heel. The turn is a success. Nick Jackson, he'll turn heel as well. The turn is a success. So the Young Bucks now heels, join with the Good Brothers, pretty much will bring in Kenny Omega as well, join up and make that super elite like we're seeing in real life. Replicate that as well. And obviously now the Young Bucks and the Hardys probably have a rematch, but in this time, obviously we have a heel versus Bay face uh, instead of a face versus face match. So the respect has gone out the window. Next up, Jim Ross and Tony Schiavone are giving their predictions on Diamante versus Britt Baker. So we wanted to have the two announcers here hyping up the match to potentially improve the storyline heat. I don't think it really helped it, but 49 is not too bad. And the match itself was 47. Wow, that's actually pretty good. So Britt Baker defended her championship in a 15 minute match, her sixth championship defense. Uh, Britt Baker, 43, Diamante, 38. So we kind of hot shot a Diamante into the title picture. The last couple of months, she's gone from doing nothing to into the title picture. And, you know, big opportunity for her to really develop and, and potentially become a top tier, um, you know, member of the women's division. I think she's kind of held her own here. 38, that's pretty solid from her. She's got low 30s popularity. So I think she did deliver in the end. And a 47 rated match, it's pretty good. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with what we've seen here. And uh, hopefully, this is the start of something good for both Diamante and Britt Baker. I'm hoping that Britt Baker can gain a bit of popularity out of this as well. Uh, the Varsity Blondes, they brawled with uh, the Wingman and uh, after Nick Man... Uh, sorry, we'll start it again. The Varsity Blondes had a brawl with the Wingman after Ryan Nemeth tried to ask out Julia Hart. So, you know, Ryan Nemeth said, look, I'm going to ask her out on a date. I'm going to go on a date with her. You know, it's going to go great. And then we're going to, you know, start dating, blah, blah, blah. Varsity Blondes didn't want to have any of that. They wanted to try and make sure that he stayed away from her. Well, Nemo's tried to approach Julia Hart. Varsity Blondes weren't too far away to make sure they shut it down. And Nemo wasn't happy that he was, you know, in his way of, of Julia. And eventually a, a fight broke out. So, probably have some sort of match between these two groups at some point. Maybe on Dark. Maybe on Dynamite. Uh, but it's a, it's a lower card situation. So, we wanted to squeeze it onto the main show here on the pay-per-view to potentially get some sort of improvement. I don't know if it'll work, but you know, give it a go. All right, the Good Brothers are back. So they're having a big night. So obviously the Young Bucks are joining with them and now they're taking on Jurassic Express. 70 rated match, really, really good. Um, in the end, Jurassic Express, they picked up the win. So that should give them a lot of popularity boost. When Jungle Boy pinned Carl Anderson during the match, we had Marco Stunt distracting Carl Anderson to try and help the Jurassic Express pick up the win. So. Marco Stunt making his presence felt there, 70 rated. Um, star of the match, there really was none was, was because everyone pretty much performed at the exact same uh, level, which is uh, good to see. Yeah, Luchasaurus also, you know, keeping up with everyone as well. That's pretty good. So, yep, that's a good uh, result. 70 is much better than what I expected. The Inner Circle wish Sammy Guevara good luck and hope that he can bring gold home for the group in the future. So obviously the situation here is Sammy Guevara wants to prove that he's a main event guy. And if he can beat Cody Rhodes tonight, then that's going to put him in the title picture. And they're wishing him all the best. They hope they can beat Cody, hope he can win championships in the future and be a star and be the next big thing. That's what Chris Jericho is telling Sammy Guevara. Good luck. Hopefully you can accomplish that. It was only a few weeks ago Chris Jericho was telling Cody Rhodes, look, you know, take it a little bit easy on Sammy. You know, he's probably not quite ready for this position yet. You know, if you can beat me, I, you can definitely beat Sammy Guevara. So, Sammy, you know, he's a little bit apprehensive right now when it comes to the inner circle. Can he really trust them? You know, do they have his best intentions? So, 
a little bit of tension within the group at the moment. But the match itself, Sammy Guevara, Cody Rhodes, didn't quite deliver as good as perhaps I would have liked. 75 rated match. It was good, but it probably wasn't the five star match I was maybe hoping for. Cody Rhodes, he performed at 83. Sammy Guevara did really well, 77, but it just didn't quite get there. 75 rated. Cody Rhodes picked up the win. He beat Sammy Guevara in about a 20 minute match. So we are grooming Cody Rhodes to be in the title picture. So this is another momentum win for him to kind of build him towards that eventual title match. 75 in the end. Post-match, Sammy Guevara was just furious about his loss. You know, this was his big moment, his big time to shine. The inner circle, they came out to the ring to try and console him, Chris Jericho especially. But Sammy Guevara, he pushed Chris Jericho down. So he shrugs and shoves Chris Jericho away. Jericho falls down. And the inner circle are like, what the hell, man? What's going on? So Sammy Guevara fuming. And maybe this could be the beginning of something else within the inner circle. We had a hype video for Kenny Omega, MJF, and Adam Page. So our main event time. Time for the big one. Triple threat match. It's been a pretty solid show so far. If we can get another big match here, this would really be the icing on the cake. Main event, MJF, Omega and Page. 74. Mm. Right, again. So we, you know, we were doing well, but um, looks like we've just fallen off a little bit with some momentum. Um, so we had MJF, 77, was the worst in the match. Kenny Omega, 86. Adam Page, 82. And it was MJF winning. Uh, MJF pinned Adam Page after Wardlow interfered, saving the day, and makes MJF his second defense of the AEW World Championship. So, yeah, look, giving the belt, keeping the belt on MJF and uh, Adam Page, Kenny Omega getting their title shots. Adam Page technically lost here, so we kind of continue that storyline with Adam Page is getting so close yet so far. And um, a way to get Kenny in the title picture keeps him strong. And MJF keeps the belt. So, 74 rated main event. It definitely could have been better. The last two matches definitely could have been a lot better. Maybe, you know, we maybe the crowd fell off a little bit because of that, you know, bad Varsity Blondes angle. I don't know. It's possible. But um, we had a lot of momentum heading into the main events, but uh, didn't quite deliver in the end. So, it's a little disappointing of a finish. But we did get a 77 rated show. So a lot of greens here. And we're a lot of good stuff here. Like Will Hobbs and Christian was really good. Jurassic Express, Good Brothers was really good. Young Bucks and the Hardys was great. So a lot of good stuff here. I mean, I think really we probably should have had the Young Bucks and Hardys main event with the, with the Young Bucks heel turn at the end. That probably was a bigger moment than the world title. Um, you know, the world title was not a throwaway, but it, it wasn't, it didn't have much of a story, much of a build behind it. Whereas the Young Bucks and Hardys probably had the big storyline, the big turn at the end. Yeah, looking back, that probably would have been a better moment. Uh, I just always have that, you know, that thought, the the world title has to main event. That's kind of my thinking. But, you know, if we if we kind of think about the world, the world tag titles on the same level, then what would have been a better main event? Definitely the Young Bucks and the Hardys. So I'm gonna give Christian Cage uh, some props. He, you know, he did really, really well. Um, and I'll go with, uh, oh, well, I'm gonna go with um, Cody Rhodes. He had, he had a good match. You know, his side of things was really good. And I'll give, um, you know, I'm gonna give Matt Hardy some props because he had a 70 rated performance. That's really, really good for him. So I'm gonna give him some praise. So. All three, obviously, pretty happy about that. All right, let's jump into the results of Fighter Fest. As I said, 77 rated show, 16,745 people attended, and we had a 76,000 buys in total. So we didn't have this as um, you know, one of our major pay view buy, like a pay view channels. Like um, the last few pay views we've done. Uh, we've had it on uh, a much bigger broadcaster, so I figured because this is a lower, lower show in a sense that we should not have it on that big pay view scale. I think what we'll do going forward, you know, our big four pay views, we'll have it on that big grand scale, which um, 
you know, is the in-demand pay-per-view, which pretty much allows us to get two, three hundred thousand buys potentially, like a, a, a huge number. And the other ones, you know, BR Live and Fight TV, you know, the, the smaller ones will probably go with that way instead. Now that we've kind of been making money, uh, things are going well for us. So we probably should have done that with the house that always wins. We didn't. We end up having uh, that on a bigger scale, 246,000 buys. Um, but you know, double and nothing, all out, all those sort of ones. We'll have it on that bigger scale, where it's fight for the fallen, fight a fest, you know, New Year smash, those sort of ones that we've kind of gone and, and made made them into sort of minor shows. Then we'll have that on that smaller buy rate, so it kind of keeps it a little bit more realistic. Because in real life, these these shows wouldn't be paid views, but for us, we need them to be paid views. Otherwise, we're going to lose money and we're going to get fired. So we we need that. All right, so we advance the day into the new month of July. And of course, that means we have our six monthly awards. And also, we're going to be talking about all the popularity changes. WWE, they had their pay-per-view stopping grounds. They had an 85-rated show, 43,000 attendance, 1.6 million viewers on the network. Main event was Bray Wyatt beating Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins to keep the WWE Championship. Baron Corbin and Dolph Ziggler for the Universal Championship as well. Yikes. Um... It's a pretty good main event, actually. That's a nice triple threat match. And in this save, Bray Wyatt, he's, you know, he's got 80 popularity. He's one of the, the top guys in WWE. He's killing it. In real life, not so much. All right, so wrestler of the year so far is Caristico. So that's the former uh, Sin Cara. So he's down in CMLL. He's having some great matches. He's averaging 81. It's pretty impressive. I mean, that's uh, really, really good. He's having, obviously, a lot of matches with Andrade now. So, La Sombra. So, I'm sure that's certainly helping out uh, his results. Company of the year so far is the WWE. So, they've been, obviously, having a lot of 80-plus rated shows. We just saw one, so they're doing really well. Team of the year is Okada and Will Ospreay. Match of the year is um, Tanahashi and Kota Ibushi beating Will Ospreay and Okada. So, pretty hard to ignore that one. What sort of match rating was that one? Um, I'll go there, top 100. So, top 100 matches of this year. That was a 99 rated match. So, yeah, that kind of deserves it. Show of the year so far is Dominion from New Japan. Young Wrestle of the Year is Austin Theory. Are we going to win anything? Veteran of the Year, Tanahashi. Female of the Year is Asuka. And Ray Phoenix is the independent wrestler of the year. So, yeah. And even though he's got two contracts. There you go. So we're not winning anything. I'll, I'll take Ray Phoenix, I guess. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So it's certainly interesting at the moment what's happening. But um, we haven't quite got any results so far. Which is okay. You know, we can't win them all. Uh, Matt Riddle, his contract is expiring. He's got 59 popularity. If we wanted to sign him, he would be $26,000 per month. WWE kind of lowballing him there with $24,500. No interest on my behalf. Sonny Kiss, a bit closer to home. His contract is expiring, and I am not going to renew it. I don't need Sonny Kiss. His performances, he's averaging, well, he's actually averaging 50. Um, but the, probably, the, the answer will be, you know, who is his damp, dance partner's been? And he usually works a lot of the top tier um, tag teams. Himself, personally, you know, he had a, a singles match here with a, a rating of 32. So, not much interest on my behalf there. Uh, Natalia, her contract is expiring. She's got 44 popularity, 39 now. Wow. Still growing, going. 39. I'm surprised she's that old, but um, yeah, 44 rated. Uh, 44 popularity, no interest on my behalf anyways. So yeah, you know, some different uh, wrestlers available at the moment. Mike Posey wants a, a pay increase. So I don't even know what he does, but sure, he can, he can have one. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at any popularity changes that we had. We'll start with the main event scene. And it looks like we've added a lot of new main event guys. Like There is a lot of major players now. On, on our roster. Adam Page, 76 popularity. I feel like he may have gone down in popularity. No, it doesn't look like to be the case. Um, he's kind of gone up in recent times, but yeah, low 70s, 76 in the southeast doing well. Uh, FTR, they've kind of been out of the mix. We need to get them in a feud. Chris Jericho, not doing much either. Christian Cage, so he's now considered to be a major star. 
So he's joined um, the high 60s club, not too far away from maybe hitting the 70s. Well, it's no surprise he hasn't had a loss since coming to AEW. Now, he hasn't worked with a major player, but he's still averaging 64. So that's really basically on his own. So I think he might be ready to feud with um, more of a top-tier babyface. I'm not sure who that'll be, but you know, maybe a Cody Rhodes would be a good um, pit stop for Cody. Speaking of Cody, 81 popularity, popularity now in the Southeast, so he's killing it. Jeff Hardy's now in the 70s. He's got 71. Kenny Omega, 77. MJF, he's got 77 in the Southeast and low 70s everywhere else. So he is he's on fire, no doubt. The Young Bucks, 67 apiece. So they still are lacking a bit of popularity. They need to get you know into the 70s at least. Malachi Black with his debut, he's still got 70. Park's got 66. So he's now in the top tier as well, which... You know, that's good to see. We haven't done a lot with Park, but obviously now he's TNT champion. He's trying to make up for lost time. Big feud with Malachi Black coming up. Um, Sammy Guevara, 66, despite the loss against Cody. So all is going pretty well in terms of the top tier stars. Um, it's the middle of the card that's the problem. You know, you've got Brian Cage, you got Hardy, JK, your Archer, Miro. There's a few guys there, but not a lot. We need to try and elevate a few more into that position. And someone like Jungle Boy could do it. He's now got 57 popularity in the Southeast. That is a five gain in the last month. So that is huge. Uh, 52 everywhere else. So huge gains for him. Uh, Luchasaurus right there whipping. He's got 55, 52 everywhere else. Um, obviously, the Good Brothers have dropped a little bit. But I don't have big plans for the Good Brothers. Yeah, they'll be kind of the sidekicks of the Young Bucks. But in terms of tag teams... They're going to be more of a stepping stone for the young tag teams and the better tag teams. Certainly, Jurassic Express, you know, we have big plans for them. I'd love for them to be right up there into the 60s plus. So that's the plan. And we're not too far away. You know, Orange Cassie, as a singles, is, is you know, he's having really good performances. We just haven't given much of a push. Might be time that we maybe change that and really kind of get behind him a little bit more. He's got 47 popularity. He definitely could be more of a major player for us he hasn't gained any popularity at all in the series so yeah we probably should do a bit more with him as well um, further down the card this is where a lot of people are finding themselves here which is the difficult part so Britt Baker now has 38 popularity which is pretty good in all areas I'm happy with that Darby Allen he's still out injured um, he can't be too far away from coming back um, but uh, yeah he's still finding himself out would have loved to have Darby, you know, in that mid-card spot, you know, maybe 60-plus popularity, but it just hasn't worked out to be. Dustin Rhodes, he's gained a lot of popularity recently as well. He's now 48, so he's not too bad. Eddie Kingston now with Moxley, so big plans for him to move up the card. Um, you know, further down, Ricky Starks obviously had a pay-per-view win. 41 popularity for him. Not too bad. So trying to maybe elevate him as well. And let's take another look. Powerhouse Will Hobbs, 39 in the southeast. It's just every other area where he's kind of lacking, but um, he did gain a popularity point after the Christian Cage match, which is good to see. I would have hoped he'd gain a little bit more, but it hasn't quite worked out. Sean Spears still sitting at 36 despite the pinnacle inclusion. Um, and yeah, obviously Anna Jay, she's now teaming up with Tay Conti. Um, that's hopefully going to work out pretty well. Tay Conti hasn't got a lot of popularity. Uh, Lee Johnson had a pay-per-view segment. He didn't quite go down too well. QT Marshall didn't gain anything after his uh, new group debuting. Anthony Agogo, not too much either. Uh, and then obviously Aaron Solo. He's got 25 in Southwest. Doesn't really help us too much, but there is something there for him. And Nick Comorado, brand new, very unknown. So nothing there. But... Um, yeah, look, the main event, guys, we've got a lot of them. It's, you know, we can definitely have good shows every single time because we have so many major stars. Now, now a few of them, like Shaq, he's leaving. Sting's a part-timer. Paul White's a part-timer. But the rest are all active and right there at the top of the card. So I'm liking what we're seeing from this. We just need to try and develop a few more guys in the middle of the card so we have some more coming through the ranks. But um, overall, really solid stuff there. Quick look at the finance. We did gain money again. So two months in a row, we have gained money, despite the fact we didn't have much in the pay-per-view buy rates. Our tickets, obviously, 
company was the big reason. We had a huge turnout for our pay-per-view, 16,000. So no surprise that um, you know we had a million dollars in ticket sales and we gained $341,000 for the month. Really good stuff. Um, very happy with that. Our merchandise went up as well by a huge amount. So obviously more fans in attendance, the more merchandise you can sell. So that's obviously a plus as well. So we are starting to make money. We're getting back on track after what has been a rough, rough journey. Cody Rhodes was our best merch seller last month, followed by Moxley and Jericho. Jeff Hardy right up there as well. Adam Page and MJF even has 21,000 in merchandise sales. So a few surprises there. Um, but um, yeah, good to see, good to see in the end. So loving what we're doing so far. So far, so good. We now enter the month of July. Fight for the Fallen will be our next show. Hopefully, we can deliver the goods as well on that one. So the last Fight for the Fallen we had, we had 100 people in attendance, 76 rated. Moxley and Brian Cage was the main event. The Sex Gods beat Adam Page in a handicap match. Oh, that's right, when Kenny and Megan got injured. Young Bucks and Private Party, MJF and Daniels, and Cody and Ray Phoenix. We had some good stuff on this card, actually. Not too bad. But, um, yeah, so we're looking forward to trying to smash that show. And eventually, we're leading into All Out, which will be the last month of August. So, hopefully, All Out can deliver as well, and we can have a big, big show there. Now, obviously, before we go, we'll address the rumors, and we'll talk more about it next episode. But obviously, there's big rumors going around that CM Punk could be on his way back um, into wrestling. He's got 85 popularity. He's got huge mic skill stats, everything like that. Um, I don't know how accurate these stats would be in this day and age, and maybe we'd have to readjust it. But there's a big chance that he might be coming back. And if he is, um, you know, we'll have to sign him. I mean, that would be huge. It really would change the way that our save is going down. And Brian Danielson's the other one. Um, well, no, hang on, this one. Daniel Bryan. Apparently, we've got two Brian Danielsons. So Daniel Bryan's the other one. 79 pop in our save. Um, he still technically is in the WWE in our save. He's averaging uh, 83 in the last couple of years. So he's obviously doing really, really well. Um, again, huge get for us if we could do it. It would, as I said, it would change the way that our save is going. Two major stars coming in at once. Oh, man, it would be very difficult to really book guys around it and it would have to really shake a lot of the storylines that we've been doing and obviously we'd have to pay a huge amount of money to sign them you know if malachi black's on over a million dollars a year well then cm punk and daniel bryan might want to be on maybe two million so um i'm looking forward to it i don't know if it's going to happen but if it does i suppose they'll be coming into our save as well but we'll we'll talk more about them in the future thanks guys for watching this episode of tw hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all in the next one.